are now watching Retro Arcade Reviews. There is a little button in the lower left hand corner. I want you to press that button. It says subscribe. So join us. Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John and in this episode we will be reviewing the arcade classic Mega Man, The Power Battle. Mega Man is a 2D fight game that was developed by Capcom in 1995. Now, Who's not a fan of Mega Man? If you are a gamer since the 80s and had an NES, then you are more familiar with the titles. I mean, it was one of Capcom's best gaming franchises of all time, and it's still going strong today. I mean, I was a big fan of the regular NES game to the Mega Man X series to Mega Man Legends. The games were cool. Now, imagine my excitement when I heard that there was a Mega Man 2D fight game out there. No boards, just a one-on-one -on -one fight with different robots. And let me remind you, it was the mid-90s, it's a 2D fighter, and it's Capcom. That was like the heyday of the 2D fight genre with Capcom at the helm of all people. The game should be amazing, and my expectations was crazy high, and that was the problem. The thing is that I didn't hear about the game until after I played Marvel vs. Capcom, where Mega Man's a playable character and he's doing some amazing stuff in the game. I mean, he's jumping crazy high, doing some amazing combos and stuff. But before that, Capcom released Marvel Super Heroes, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, and Darkstalkers. So yeah, my expectation was through the roof. I was expecting something like the Mega Man in Marvel vs. Capcom, but much to my disappointment, it was literally like the Mega Man from Mega Man 7 or Mega Man X series, just with no boards. It kind of felt less like an arcade game and more like an SNES game. In fact, I thought it should have been strictly an SNES SNES game or PlayStation game rather than an arcade game, but even if it was, it still wouldn't have been as impressive, sadly to say. I think Mega Man Power Battle would have been even better as an arcade game with whole new stages rather than without. Another disappointment was it really wasn't a player versus player fight game. It was a two player co-op against single bosses. I think it would have made all the difference if you could choose a co-op story mode or a versus mode with all the bosses available to choose from, each with an arsenal of moves at your disposal. I think that would have been Awesome. In this game, you and a buddy can either choose Mega Man, Proto Man, or Base. Now, the story goes that Dr. Wily revived 18 robot masters from the previous Mega Man games to help him take over the world. You can choose one of three stories, Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 6, or 7, each of which contains the bosses of its subsequent games. In true Mega Man fashion, after you defeat an opponent, you acquire their weapon to use on other opponents who may or may not be vulnerable to the weapon. Regardless of the story you choose, you have to fight your way through a total of 6 robot masters and one fortress boss before you take on Dr. Wily. At your disposal, each character has a regular shot, a charge shot, and a dash maneuver. There are three different endings depending on the character you choose. Mega Man The Power Battle was ported over to the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox as part of the Mega Man Anniversary Collection and an adaption of the game by the name of Rockman Battle and Fighters was made available for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. As stated earlier, the game was released in the heyday of the 2D fight genre and it sorely did not meet expectations in the arcades. It was just one of those games that people skipped over because it was just so underwhelming for a Capcom game. So if you're a Mega Man fan, and if you dare, I say play Mega Man 11 for the Switch, Xbox One, or PS4, and let me know what you think.